Hello, my name is Jacob Yunker. I am the pastor of the Franklin United Methodist Church located at 82 West Central Street in Franklin, Massachusetts and online at franklinumc.org. This is the first reading. On Sunday, January 31st, we will continue reading through the Gospel of Mark. Our reading is from Mark chapter 10, verses 17 through 27. As Jesus continued down the road, a man ran up, knelt before him, and asked, Good teacher, what must I do to obtain eternal life? Jesus replied, Why do you call me good? No one is good except the one God. You know the commandments. Don't commit murder. Don't commit adultery. Don't steal. Don't give false witness. Don't cheat. Honor your father and mother. Teacher, he responded, I've kept all these things since I was a boy. Jesus looked at him carefully and loved him. He said, you are lacking one thing. Go, sell what you own and give the money to the poor. Then you will have treasure in heaven, and come, follow me. But the man was dismayed at his statement, and went away saddened, because he had many possessions. Looking around, Jesus said to his disciples, It will be very hard for the wealthy to enter God's kingdom. His words startled the disciples, so Jesus told them again, Children, it's difficult to enter God's kingdom. It's easier for a camel to squeeze through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter God's kingdom. They were shocked even more and said to each other, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them carefully and said, It's impossible with human beings, but not with God. All things are possible for God. I know when I read this story, I have thought often about possessions and wealth. But as I read through this story this time, wealth and possessions really seem like secondary issues. After all, we don't find out the man has an abundance of possessions until after he's gone away sad. Reading the story this time, what sticks out to me is Jesus' call to discipleship and the selfish motivation and response of the man. When the man kneels before Jesus and asks his question, the question is for his own benefit. Good teacher, what must I do to obtain eternal life? His concern is ultimately for himself. Jesus tries to get the man to think beyond himself. Jesus asks the man if he has kept the commandments relating to his temporal relationships. Don't commit murder. Don't commit adultery. Don't steal, don't give false witness, don't cheat, honor your father and mother. The man says he's followed all these rules, all these commandments. His relationships are in order. But when Jesus looks carefully at the man, what Jesus sees, I think, is a man who has lived his faith and life primarily for himself. When Jesus tells the man to sell the abundance of his possessions, Jesus is not making a commentary about wealth, but instead making a statement about discipleship. Discipleship is about living for the other. Following Jesus is not about ensuring one's ticket to heaven or obtaining an eternal life or an ultimate reward. Following Jesus is not about what we get, but what we give to establish the kingdom of God now, not for our own sakes, but for the sake of Christ and others. The central question raised by this story for me is what am I or or what are you contributing so that God's kingdom of love, peace, mercy, and justice might be established here as it is in heaven? What are we fearful of giving up so that peace, justice, love, and mercy might reign in our time? What might Jesus ask that would cause me or you to turn from Jesus 
and go away sad? These are a few of the questions and thoughts I'm wrestling with after this first reading. What thoughts and questions do you have about it? Write your thoughts, your questions, your comments, your spiritual profundity, profundities and doubts below and join me in conversation this week. I hope you'll consider joining me and the people of the Franklin United Methodist Church in worship on Sunday at 10 a.m. as we continue our reflection beyond this first reading.